Hello out there fans and welcome to another video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. That's Blender T E K dot com. Don't forget to subscribe for more Blender, Unity 3D, and programming videos. The team adds at least one quality video a day, if not more. And lastly, don't forget to remember, create your way. Today we will be going into more tips and tricks because it seems to be very popular. So four tips and tricks, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're on volume five, I believe. Since we haven't uploaded many videos in the last couple days, I'm trying to do at least a few here today because these tips and tricks seem very popular. And earlier today, I thought of, let's call it tips and tricks, Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm gonna see if I can keep up with that but at the very least we're gonna have tips and tricks Tuesdays or tips and tricks Thursdays and if I can keep up with it both so anyways instead of my usual rambling let's get on with the first trick I highly recommend you watch the other volumes because I use a lot of the tips and tricks from the other volumes in the next volume so you may be lost at certain points if you haven't watched the other volumes but I try to repeat tips and tricks in my new volumes anyways on to the tricks I'm gonna show you something that I learned and this is kind of lecturing but this is very important thing to think of when you're setting up lighting so I'm gonna delete this icosphere that we were using to align views in the last volume if you missed it all you had to do was select a single face and then hit shift numpad 7 and it instantly aligns you to that face so that was from last volume so anyways I'm gonna delete this icosphere so let's say I created a new lamp we're just gonna create a simple point lamp now if we go into the lamp settings you have your usual setting the size as well as the strength and that's what we're going to be focusing on for the tips here actually we're not going to be focusing on size at all all size does is it defines how sharp your shadows are going to be so a size low like this at 0 decimal 1 makes very sharp shadows but if you up that to say 3 or 4 it's going to make extremely soft shadows what I wanted to talk about was strength so for point lamps for spot lamps and for area lamps it's simple the strength is measured in watts now watts may be very familiar to you watts are what light bulbs are measured in so this is extremely easy when you're creating a point spot or area lamp the default setting of a hundred makes it equal to a hundred watt light bulb so that's just something to remember when you're creating lamps, lamps in your scenes to think of how would I set this up especially if you're doing indoor stuff you would say okay I've got my rough light and I've got my size set up for my shadows but how strong do I want it well I want it to cast about as much light as a hundred watt light bulb well okay it's at a hundred and that means a hundred watts but let's say you want it to cast the amount of light as say six sixty watt light bulb so all you'd have to do is type in three hundred and sixty and now it's as strong as six 60 watt light bulbs now you may know how strong a 60 watt light bulb is because that's your average household household light bulb so that's just something that I learned I never knew it was measured in watts so that's something to think of now how this kind of uh, fits in and a little bit of extra, extra information is that if we were to go and create a different lamp a sun lamp suns measured much differently notice how it the strength is not at a hundred notice it's at one that's because sun lamps are measured in watts per meter squared now the reason for this is simple the Sun its watt output is somewhere I don't remember the exact number but it's somewhere around three eight four two zero 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 watts so that obviously would be completely unapplicable to blender and it would make it extremely hard to tune your sun lamps so sun lamps are measured in watts per meter squared 
because a sun puts out million trillions of watts. So a strength of one just simply means that your sun is putting out one watt per meter squared. Now all you have to do is go online and search out how much energy does the sun put out per meter squared. I think it's somewhere around seven or eight. So you type in like 7.6 say is the answer. And so now your sun setup is exactly like the real world sun. It's putting out the exact same amount of energy per meter squared. So it's putting out 7.6 watts meters per meter squared. So you can make it extremely realistic to life and this is going to increase the realism in your scenes. So just something to think about. Now on to some more useful tricks instead of just stats and rambling essentially. Let me delete my lab. Oh one last thing. If you were to say create a mesh circle or a plane, not a circle, if you were to add a mesh sphere or a plane, now you know I think everyone knows by now and if you don't you have some more videos to watch if you were to create a new material and choose a mission now what this is gonna do is this mesh is gonna output light just like one of our lamps would and that's a new feature of the cycles render engine obviously so what this sphere would do is every face would output light in that direction at strength one in this nice white color so the reason I brought this up is because mesh emission objects, so when you create a plane, a sphere, a cube, whatever, and you choose a mission as the surface shader, it is also measured in watts per meter squared. So you have to think about that. You could go online and search up studio lights in watts slash meters exponent 2. So you would go to Google and type in studio lighting watts forward slash M and then you get the exponent symbol so that's shift 6 and then 2 so that's to the power of 2. So that way you can find out exactly what power studio lights would have in watts meters squared. And if Google brings up results that just simply says your average studio light has this many watts of power, all you have to do is go and get a calculator that converts the watts output, find out the area of your mesh. So if you had a plane, just enable the, um, the areas of your plane in the end bar and then just calculate it. So just something I wanted to bring up, more quick rambling. So let me delete that and get into some real useful tips. One thing that a lot of people don't know about is fly mode. Now this is extremely useful if you're creating like levels for games or if you have extremely huge scenes. So let me find my guitar setup here that I originally had that I've been working on for the last few days and hence haven't uploaded a lot of videos. And now my view is just all over the place. Let me just select the body and press the period key on the numpad and that instantly aligns it. And it's still rotated all funny. I'm not going to worry too much about it. But anyways, for fly mode, go into camera view, that's just numpad zero, and so that brings up a camera preview as usual, right? But instead, to get into fly mode, what we do is you make sure your camera is selected in your outliner. So my camera is selected, you can tell that because it has the orange lines around it. And then you press Shift F. And we're now in fly mode. Now do you see at the very bottom of the screen, I can't show you with my mouse cursor, but you see at the very bottom of the screen all the settings. So left mouse button confirms, so basically that says if I move to here, that's where my camera is now going to be set if I press left mouse button or enter key. Escape or right mouse button cancels so it goes back. So let me just press shift and F to enter fly mode again. Now here's the cool thing. W, A, S, and D moves you around just like in a first person shooter. So you can move around your levels kind of like you were a first person shooter, right? Um, you can hold down shift now 
and that's turbo mode as you can see you can just move extremely fast and fast in fact it's too fast it's hard to say and there is a setting to change how fast turbo mode is alt is slow so as you can see now we're moving very 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 slow uh, Q and E brings you straight up and down so this is very useful for not only exploring your levels that you create for games but also for setting up your camera exactly where you want it without having to play around with moving axes and rotating axes etc now there's a few other things here the middle mouse button or pressing the space bar teleports you I'm not gonna show you that now because I think that's gonna screw things up and V is jump and the mouse wheel increases or decreases speed so I think if we're moving and then you yeah if you scroll the mouse wheel up it increases your move speed and if you oh no now I'm lost if you move your mouse wheel way down there we go so I've now scrolled my mouse wheel way down you can see I'm barely moving at all and as I scroll my mouse wheel up I get faster and faster and faster now let me try to set it up here so that I'm on this plane but if you press tab that turns gravity off or on so as you can see well no it doesn't count because so gravity's off right now but it doesn't really matter um, but basically you can w walk around your levels yeah right now I'm walking on this plane right here and if I press tab to turn gravity off then I'm flying but now if I come up here and align myself above this plane and press tab I fall onto that plane so you can explore your levels completely and I'm gonna show you the teleport function now so I'm gonna press tab to turn gravity off I'm gonna move back up here so now if you press what is it if you press middle mouse button or space it instantly teleports you there so I'm gonna press middle mouse button and I teleport right there so like I said this is an easy way to either a check out your scenes and levels and explore them as if they were actual real-world levels and objects kinda like a first-person shooter or you can just set up your camera view and when you're done just left mouse click or hit enter to confirm where you want your camera view to be and also V is jump I don't know why I'm not jumping oh that's because gravity's off so tab to gravity on Oh, I fell off the plane. So let me turn gravity back off. Increase my speed a little bit with the mouse wheel to get up here. All right. So now turn gravity off. So now I'm walking on the plane and I fell off again. So gravity off. Let's try to get on this plane <laughs> so that I can show you the last function, which is jumping. So tab for gravity off. Okay, so now I can walk around this plane. And I can press V to jump. As you can see, I jump a little bit. And there is a setting somewhere in the user preferences to change how far you jump up and down. So yeah, there you go. That's a nice little trick I learned. So let's say I wanted to, uh, instead of this view, I just wanted to take, this is my camera view. Now I just hit left mouse button and now my camera view is set to there. So that's an easy way to set up your camera view or check out your levels. I went on that one way too long. Let's move on to the next tip. I want to show you proportional editing because it's a fairly recent new feature, but it's it's also it's not known by a lot of people because it's because it's new and because people don't really know how to use it. So let's take this cube and let's subdivide it again a bunch of times to do two actually so proportional editing is let's say we selected this face right in the middle roughly here and we grabbed it as you can see the face is directly attached to it come with it so that's what you would normally expect this is what normally happens in blender now I call this the oh sh you know what word problem because oh as you see down here if I press O, that's what turns proportional editing on. So press O to turn it on and it'll turn blue. Now let's see what happens when we grab the uh, when we grab this face. 
as you can see it moves a lot of faces and nice and smooth and you see that circle we use the mouse wheel cursor to make it smaller so we can just pull those ones or if we scroll it down to make it bigger we can affect as many as we want so this is a great way to make interesting shapes easily and right now we're what's in called smooth mode let me show you a couple of the other modes quickly so I'm just gonna make it smaller so that we can see the effect somewhere around that size I think will be good that way we get the effect without affecting the whole cube so I'm gonna right click to undo that so you see down here this is called the fall off options so we have all these different ones so yeah proportional editing fall off so we're usually on smooth like I said which creates that nice smooth work you can also choose sphere so if I grab it again it creates a nice perfect sphere like I said if you can change the shape with the mouse wheel so again you can create very very interesting shapes with this like I said you can create a perfect sphere coming out of your cube in no time but one I really wanted to show off is random so now let's grab this face see how it randomizes it now and if I make it bigger it just creates all sorts of weird stuff this is a great way to create like mountains easily and stuff or just to add like just slight little details to a mesh without bump mapping or manually doing it so proportional editing can come in very handy for editing large portions of your mesh at once in different but controlled ways like if we choose constant and grab it as you can see it grabs that whole thing equally and if we make it bigger you can see it grabs the whole cube if we make it smaller you can see it just grabs the faces that the circle has selected so that's a great way to create like sci-fi kind of looking shapes um, I'll just show you the rest of these linear that simply is like it's just linear curve everything is brought up exactly the same amount so that's another way to create like equal sized extensions and extrusions what else there's sharp this was a little interesting so as you can see it gets sharper and sharper the more you pull it up and if we make it a little bit bigger you can see yeah it creates really really pointy shapes so it, it kind of speaks for itself as to what they are root that's that's another interesting one it works kind of like the sphere is smooth but it also kind of mixes in the um it kind of mixes in some of the other ones too so this one you can see can really stretch but it keeps the top nice and rounded we can create it bigger and it does those weird effects we can make it smaller and it does something like that and so it'll only affect the vertices you have selected or faces or lines so if I go smooth again and I have these ones selected notice how it now affects all the ones I have selected and the mouse wheel again makes it bigger or smaller so this is very very useful for car modeling creating levels terrain etc etc so I just wanted to show you proportional editing and we are at the 20 minute mark again which is about what I like to keep these two I think I'm gonna quit there for today I wanna upload these to YouTube I've got some editing to do now I just wanted to make up for not uploading the last few days because I've been working on my guitar as you might have seen in volume 3 anyways Thanks for watching from the team here at BlenderTech.com. Again, that's BlenderTech.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like it. And don't forget to subscribe for more Blender, Unity 3D, and programming videos. We now offer hard copies of our videos. If you'd like a copy to download onto your computer to watch later, let us know and we will upload it to our server for you to watch later in the media player of your choice. If you disliked this video for some reason, don't just leave. Instead, leave a comment or email the team at blend info at blendertech.com about what you did not like. We also take requests for tutorials, so let us know what you want or want more of instead of just more tips and tricks Tuesdays and Thursdays. Let us know what exactly you want. So see you next time, and remember, 
create your way also one last note I'm gonna be adding some more unity tutorials up next a little more advanced than what I've been doing just the basic physics and camera setups that we have so far so anyways see you next time